So, Steve. Yes, sir. Uh, what, you know, there's a thing. I, I, there's a thing I like to say. I don't think I'm not a, a a Prince fan, as much as I'm a Prince appreciator, devotee, or something like that. What, what would you categorize yourself as? When I first met you, contacting you about a song, Little Red Corvette, the 12 inch mix on BAI, I, I loosely said, "Yeah, I'm a Prince fan." You're like, fan, huh? You're a fan, and when you met you at BAI, blah blah blah, you said fan. And when I meant fan, I meant didn't mean fanatic. It was just my simple way of saying. You know, fan, but love of the music. Now I would say lover of the, I would just say lover of the artist, the artist Prince and his art. Mm. So I would say a lover of Prince and his art as an artist. What's your journey towards that road? I mean, what what has the road been for you? When did you first come in contact with that, with his artistry? And what's I want to be a lover, 1979. Bobby thought it was a group. First time I saw a picture of him, 1980 Controversy album, um, Union Square, a disco rama in Union Square, New York City. Picture of the album Controversy. Oh, this is Prince guy. I think subconsciously I didn't really believe his name was Prince. Mm. I kept calling him this Prince guy. Uh. Like during <laughs> 84 before I saw it, right? Oh, this Prince guy has a movie coming out. Mm. Right. And um, started with 79 with I Want to Be a Lover, and then it evolved. And um, So that's almost like what we call the black road, you know what I mean? Because you, you, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> right, explain, right. explain that, what I mean by that. Right, it's like, uh, you, you know, you catch an artist before they become big. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's like, okay, I'm into this artist before they before the world discovers them you know the whole dirty mind thing controversy thing before but it's an r&b artist specifically yeah it was an r&b you 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 well you know he as an artist was always trying to like donny hathaway has a thing extension of a man the line of those he talked about i want to be all that i could be and when you look at prince you know he's got rock he's got a lot of different things that he mixed up but of course and of course you know to a certain degree you could say it's almost like race records in the 50s. Okay, he's black, he does this type of thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But he was always stretching the boundaries of doing anything I want to do. They talked to him around, around the world in the day. He said, people said, you left your roots, your black roots. He said, I don't think I left my roots anywhere along the line. To me, Around the World Day is a very funky album. And then the whole thing with the black album, oh, well, he's not black, so he did the black album. This is what black people are supposed to do. Mm-hmm. But he was already stretching the limits whatever you want to do. You could say Sign of the Times was quote unquote blacker than the Black Album. Mm-hmm. And he actually put, because when you think about the Black Album, it's a certain type of music, mm-hmm. but you know, when you have an artist like Prince who could do the rock thing, the jazz thing. I was just listening to uh, the Kama Sutra, MPG orchestra, he was playing classical, be all that you can be. Mm-hmm. That's the t- total spectrum of, you want to say, blackness, if you want to say that. A little, a little, a little of uh, audio Easter egg here, but you know who's on the Black Album? Jay Rodriguez. Yes, I, I uh, heard him uh, mention that uh, with Jeannie, that he's uh, on that album. And um, that was a big journey to I remember seeing you at 505 8th Avenue. Yeah, Anthony, I saw the cassette for the Black Album on Carmine Street. You're like, what? And you went right down to get it. Mm-hmm. And then you played it right on the air. And that was the introduction to, you want to say, bootlegging or just music that wasn't officially released and just seeing the full spectrum of now, you know, now that Prince has passed, you know, this, when he was alive, there was always this talk about his vault. What's in the vault? Now it becomes even more of a mystique, mystery yeah. and mystique that's in the vault. And, you know, somebody the other day said, well, you know, if it hasn't been released, there's a good reason. It might not be very good. And that's not Prince's modus operandi. He's just not finished with it. He's just not finished. He's got, he might have three albums that he recorded and limitations that he's just going to release one. Mm. You know, but he's got a bunch of stuff. He just put it in the vault. But just like Stevie Wonder's another one. He might put this out. For instance, just recently he said that I Can't Help It from, uh, that he gave to Michael Jackson was an outtake from our songs in the key of life. The woman that he did the song with Suze Green was sitting next to him and she said she didn't know that. Mm. Okay? So you have, look, Marvin Gaye. Mm. Songs like Piece of Clay. 
Oh, my, my, oh, you mentioned strange. You should mention that because I when you people say like, I, I tell me, hey, check yeah. out piece of piece right. of clay. That talking about social, talk about domestic social relevance. Wow. As an artist, you know you can sometimes you know your creativity is limited. Well, your creativity is not limited, but how you release it is limited by the means that they use at the time. With Prince's case, all these songs, okay, I'm just, and that was a little battle he fought with this, with the industry, is that how much I want to put out, and how much you allow me to put out, and how much, you know, man space and break and all things, so, spreading his art, so to speak. Well, just keep on on your, on your journey. So, so, uh, do you, how, how did you get to us? I, I always invite people in, I suppose. Because I just let you in, but I don't know. I, I had think. heard the Little Red Corvette the 12-inch mix. The, 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 the time, remix. It wasn't the, the, yet. The extended, extended one. Mix. It wasn't, the one at the end that says, uh, Mayday. 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 Yeah, that's great. And, you know, yeah. being, you know, the, after the Purple Rain explosion, and then I heard you, well, the BAI played it. I guess it was 86, right? I think Creative Unity was doing something, you know. Yeah, but we did our first print, print special in, the, in 84 when in the 84, movie came out. When the, and, and the, being ahead of the curve, because um, Paul Wonder with you, you guys got the actual movie. We got the movie it. on the on the, 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 the big the tape, you know what I mean? Right. So right. the sound right the sound was amazing. Right. So we right. played the entire movie on, <laughs> on the, the air. air. That was in eighty four. <laughs> and it didn't come out on videotape at that time until at least the next month. So you guys had it early. Yeah, yeah. And you had your whole thing with, uh, when I understand it was you, Bernard White, Samori Marksman. But that was on the special. The special was done mm. by CT3 and Dion. Right, right, okay? right. Okay, because what, what the story is basically, I they, they were like, I don't want to say trouble kids, but they're like on the edge, you know, like that. And I said, well, what do you want to do? I'm in the radio said, what do you want to do? Yeah, so yeah, we yeah. want to do a print special right away. And I'm going like, what year was that though? That's was 84. 84, okay, right. And I'm going like, ooh, this is going to be a little difficult. Because <laughs> I know with the station I was going to, they wasn't have, they wasn't into prints or nothing like that. Mm. And so I said, sure. And so I, uh, I, I ended up uh, asking uh, Hopley Selassie and Paul Wonder for their time slots because they had this whole thing on the Saturday nights into Sunday morning. So it mm -hmm. ended up being like an eight and a half hour or so, whatever long it Marathon, was. Be as and, long for that. And, and so they didn't want to do the membership drive anyway. So mm -hmm. so we stepped in for the reason why you mentioned Bernard and, and Samori and even Lynn Sims because I had Bernard and, and we did four carts mm -hmm. the month before. It was uh, Bernard did a cart. Lynn Samuels did a cart, I did a cart, and CT3 and Dion did a cart. Oh, okay. And we did put them in rotation, but they all were good. But Lynn Samuels was the best way I mixed it, because I mixed all the carts. Mm -hmm. and it, it was just, you have to sort of, it, well, we won't go into that. But, uh, but Samori was in there because I include everybody in special. Samori was, again, you know, politically correct. Right, right, so right. So I had, like, record him doing a commentary against <laughs> Prince, and I put that on the air. Right, I just right, put right. everything. I, <laughs> I actually I had some arguments with them telling them how socially conscious Prince was. Well, what does he do for the community? I said he gives a lot. Marva Collins, you know, has come out recently that he was giving money to schools in Africa, and his second wife is building a school somewhere in Africa with uh in his name mm. it gives a lot a lot of, but which he doesn't know he didn't talk about it though. which is interesting because i think that the only continent he didn't go to was africa that we know of because we're always finding something well, new when i say go to i mean perform, perform. or whatever because he was in brazil you know what i mean i don't, he was know, in if brazil, he, I don't, right. even, I don't know if he ever did mexico or central america but i know I he's in brazil he mexico, uh, no. of course he did australia all over europe japan right, right, right. you know whatever right, all over right. the united states for some reason he was and and i was hoping that with this last thing the piano solo whatever have you that he would tour that or, or finally get get to africa i but, think it's know. just a matter of him just not getting there I think he, you know, because, you know, I, I saw an interview where he mentioned John Henry, he was reading John Henry Clark, mm. Prince. Mm. And I was like, you know about John Henry Clark? Mm. And he talked about some of the concepts. So he was, you know, he was on a journey himself too, a spiritual journey. Yeah, he's on Jehovah a journey. Witness, whatever, but he would, you know, he was, you know, but you know, his early way. thing, even that thing where running, running it to Russia, to Russia, Russia right? Whatever. To Russia, that's, that's, there's a lot of little political things that you wouldn't. He get. would do things differently. Like yeah. if you listen to "Party Up" from mm. Ninth, from uh, "Dirty Mind," mm. that's a political record, mm. you know. But the way he's doing it, it's like 
he's okay you talk about love sex it being a gospel record but when you listen to it you wouldn't think it's gospel but the way he was no he did a lot of gospel expressing the, it was the gospel whole gospel thing, so. which which is an interesting thing let me let me talk about love sex it was quite interesting because in my take was like Oh, okay, he's on the cover with the thing, and they had the, the little flower, the whatever lotus phallic symbol coming, coming up, but it had like a tail. Now, if you go into the old racial stereotypes, they would say black people have tails and blah blah blah. blah. Okay, all but right. But more important than that. At that particular point, everybody, all all these little girls were into Prince. Right. Like, dare I say, little white girls. Mm -hmm. I know he it was like a fit for them, for these uh, these fathers to come home and see their little girls with a with Prince on their right. their their naked, thing, naked black on their, man on the. You know that that right. much. But let's go. Let, let me ask you about that. For well, let, what's your take on that? Let me just ask you that first. On the whole Love Sexy album cover or, thing, or, or just his? I want to say. Um, um, ways of sticking it to the man. Let's put it that way. Let me stay. Let me stay black on this. Um, yeah, that's that was his thing against establishment. I mean, you know, one thing about being noticed. Another thing about okay, let's say an album like Dirty Mind. Sister, I had sex with my sister. I really don't believe he had sex with a sister, but they got an album to be released, and he's talking about sister. Head. He's got a song called Head on Dirty Mind album. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, okay, and that's, you know, that was way before, right back then he was on the ground. And then when he does Darling Nikki and Tipper Gore with the parent musical resource start tripping. But that's only because that album was above ground, and plus, remember, right, remember ground, right. when you say Dirty Mind, right. they put, that's the name of the album. Right. What do you, 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 what do you expect? You know, that right, kind of thing. Right, right, right. But, but keep going. I he was know. like, on the, just like a, a, a rebel. He, he at one point, a controversy album. Um, Rude Boy, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of it was okay. The name of the publishing company at the time was Controversy Music, you know. Mm -hmm. They're doing things, you know, a parent is staged basically naked, you know, in underwear. Now here's you know, the thing. Just to get people to here's notice. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Now back then, remember, we're, we're talking the early, the early '80s, right? And remember, the, the sexual context, the, the ambiguity, whatever have you, was very big. So he was basically riding that wave and, right. and being in the groove with that. Right. But there's something else that's really hidden. I don't think people understand. You have to understand, as far as the industry goes, the overall society, what we call the Anglo racist white supremacist society, they never let a true black man through. When I say a strong black man through, mm. and if you notice Prince when he didn't talk and begin, begin that, even his walk was this uh, dare I say dare I say sissy walk, you know what I mean? So so it was this ambiguity, you know. And if, let me just do the walk. So he had that walk for the early stages, and then somewhere after around parade or, or even uh, mm -hmm. or even uh, uh, I would say even around the world in a day around parade, then you get this uh, regular guy, mm. right? Then, then you have. Then to me, this is the third walk, the injury walk, where where you know where he has the thing. If you notice, his walk then was 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 a, a walk of a, a injured person toward near the end. You couldn't see it, but I could. I could right, see right, it. Right, right. So, but anyway, so so I think he he played the industry. To, to, oh, you, you only gonna let let, let let effeminate people through? Okay, I'll be effeminate for a second. That was the the, the the society thing. I bet one of the reasons they say he didn't talk is because people miss construed his words. Mm -hmm. Plus he was a shy guy at yeah. the same time too. Right. I'm shy, he's gonna shy, but you get on the stage and you, you know, doing some things like how shy can you really be? Because mm -hmm. if you could say you're shy and a shy person wouldn't, a truly shy person wouldn't get on stage and do some of the things he's doing. Well, I don't know. I don't know because I, I've seen, I've seen it, I've seen it happen. Hmm. I've seen it happen. This is what we call behind the camera, whatever, and then in front of the camera. You have Different. somebody. They, they, they just a uh, natural performer. In fact, he was a total. Even let's put it this way. He, you know, he he died at the age of fifty-seven, of, which is they say that's the mean age for an a, an, a musician to die. Now we take all the older musicians. Right, that's the mean too. age. He's like the perfect. Um, a, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say musician, the perfect performer mm -hmm. in this whole thing. His mistake really was that he just did too many splits. I'm not even I'm not talking about jumping off the stacks. I'm talking about just full on splits. Just too many yeah. of them. And, and even dancers don't do that many for that many shows or whatever have you. Even even if you did warm ups, you still those right. are the kind of splits he did. And right. when you see the kind of splits he did yes, and how he came up, you know, he was he had a little bit of a dance training, of mm -hmm. course. Uh, but there was, there was, those are acrobatic kind mm -hmm. of things. I mean, that's what really got him. It's not the jumping, not the mm -hmm. high heels. It's those splits. Excuse me, but even at the end when he was before he wasn't doing the splits, but he was still 
He could do his constant thing. Motion, constant motion. Right. And um, to me, on a little note about the, the death, it was unnecessary. Well, he knew it. Your prince, it was accidental, even the medical examiner, accidental overdose. Mm. Dude, your prince. You're the best doctors. You might not be able to do what you used to do. And you might have found out recently, Shaka Khan and her sister checked into we rehab that, yeah. mm -hmm. because the prescription. He had an accidental overdose, playing around, not playing around, dealing with a very powerful opioid, opioid painkiller. And to me, it just should have been, look, he, he actually almost passed away a week before. Yeah, that's what they yeah. the, the One of his artists was on the plane. He did his final show. And she's talking with him like we're talking, mm -hmm. and she's looking at him, and then he nods off. Mm -hmm. And if she wasn't paying attention, she would have thought that maybe Judith Hill was the person. She would have thought that he just fell asleep. No, he nodded off, mm -hmm. and they brought him back. But this time, when you're taking that powerful painkiller so close, they said he was probably in the elevator for like six hours before they found him. Yeah, well, the whole thing, there's a whole thing about, you know, uh, born on the seventh of the month, seventh being very secretive or whatever, have it as, mm. as, as a number. Uh, but I don't want to stay, well, let me just stay on that, that thing for for a bit. It's interesting, again, you know, Jimi Hendrix had an accidental overdose, accidental, too. Accidental, right. Accidental, only because the, the, the sleeping pill that he got was right. a sleeping pill that was made in Europe, mm. and now he was used to American sleeping pills, so he overdosed, not overdosed. knowing the dose. But I Plus he go, had alcohol, too, uh, right? Yes. Because Miles Davis said Dorothy Dandridge had the same issue. That's right. You're not supposed to mix sleeping pills yeah. with alcohol. alcohol. That's right. And uh, But there's uh, it is the other thing that was very interesting to me. Um, the great musician Louis Armstrong, mm. his last wife, his third wife was main wife, she would not let him uh, uh, go out of the country without his own doctor. I'm saying, I'm saying this for a lot of these musicians, you know, you got enough money, you should train. You should train your boy to be a doctor. That becomes your doctor. You train. You train another boy to be a, a lawyer. That's your lawyer. You train a sister to, to you know, to be your public. To be your historian. Your, right. You should have your crew. Be. Your crew should be uh, uh, not only your 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 bodyguards and your whatever, but they, and, and your, whatever. They should also be these other things. You should have. You should have your own but doctor. But competent because Michael had somebody who. Really wasn't yeah, but that wasn't his doctor. You right, understand what right, I'm saying? Right. You know what I mean by your doctor. A real doctor. You know what I mean? Right, Somebody right. That, that knows you for years. Right, you know, right, right. And then you right, can employ right. him. You, he's on retainer. You, you, right, or she's right, on right, retainer. Right. You, this da, what you da, 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 da. Yeah, that's So hopefully these, right. these lessons uh, are uh, hopefully the lessons are to be learned. Um, right. I, you know, it's something I think I'm going to make this long. I, I usually cut this. No, let me, let, me, let me stop it right now and mm -hmm. go to part two. Hold on.